the top of the uh, the show, I do want to discuss the possibility of a general strike. We we might be seeing some uh, additional general strike actions taking place. There was some big general strike actions that were um, that were organized around May Day. Uh, we we saw a record number of strikes over the summer this year. Uh, there's a, a website called Payday Report. Payday Report. Highly recommend that website. It's a very good website, and uh, they talk about strikes. And there's been a ton of strikes this year. A ton of wildcat strikes. A ton of organized strikes. And uh, right now, there's a bunch of unions organizing um, organizing a general strike surrounding uh, the election. Primarily, what they're saying is if Trump refuses... Well, at first, they were saying if Trump meddles with the election in any way, there will be a general strike to prevent him from doing that. Uh, it's pushed back against, you know, his uh, chicanery. Um, but now it's whether or not he's going to leave. That's that's the big question mark that we're all facing here is, is Trump going to fucking leave the White House uh, without creating, you know, a, a, a large amount of, of, of issues here, which is doubtful. I don't know. I don't I don't think he's going to leave on on quiet terms. You know, that's just not how the dude does stuff. Uh, dude likes to be fucking loud and boisterous about his shit. And, uh, and I think he's going to continue to be loud and boisterous about his shit. That's just what he does. That's just how he operates. Uh, so, I mean, he's already emboldened his people to believe that uh, there was some fraud with the mail-in ballots, which is hilarious because the Republicans are the ones that, in a general election, uh, are mo- more likely to uh, cause election fraud. That's just what happens all the time, right? And so there's a chance that he might not leave because he doesn't believe that he lost the election. Um, so, you know, is that true? I'm, I'm, th- he's going to go to the courts to do that? That's going to be the last three months of his thing? Like, he's not going to leave on a note that's really going to piss off neoliberals. He's going to leave off on a note that's just going to piss off the people that are already pissed off that he is a person that exists. Uh, so, you know, it sucks. But I'm glad to see that the unions are going to hold his feet to the fire. Uh, they're going to use the power of the general strike to call attention to uh, things like election fraud. And what I would hope would happen going forward is that the unions can use the power of their of of the general strike of of strikes in 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 general uh, against even Democrats who um, who who push back against progressives and uh, you know that's that's how they commit election fraud and uh, I wish that the that the unions would have done that. Uh, but we have we have some in Pittsburgh, in Pennsylvania at least. We have uh, seven unions, three local AFL CIO chapters, and over six hundred thousand workers saying that they will engage <laughs> engage in a general strike if Donald Trump doesn't leave the office. On top of that, Vermont's AFL-CIO is organizing an actual general strike on November 21st if uh, if he has not, you know, bowed down and and begun the uh, peaceful transition of power uh, to to the other racist grandpa uh, that is going to be taking over the White House. Following that, we have the Seattle Education Association. They're convening to meet and talk about what the next steps are in this situation, right? And and I hope the next steps are to uh, push back against people like Joe Biden, who has said no to Medicare for all. And uh, I think the next step should be that we should have a general strike regardless, that there should be a general strike regardless of whether Donald Trump is leaving the office or not, because Joe Biden um, has refused to recognize 
what the people of this country actually want. Uh, denying Medicare for all, uh, not banning fracking, uh, no Green New Deal, um, you know, uh, no immigration reform, um, no Medicare for all. Did I say that? I feel like I said that before already. No UBI. And these are just some of the things. That no defunding the police. He actually wants to give the police more money, right? And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Um, so we should have a general strike against that. We should just have a general strike against anybody that is not going to listen to the voice of the people. And Joe Biden is one of them. So is Kamala Harris. She's also uh, not really listening to the voice of the people. They're, the whole administration is. That so... Really, the general strike should be for systemic change, for systemic reforms. That's what the general strike should really be about. And once again, we see the labor movement, the unions, really lead the charge to drive some change. Uh, Governments aren't doing it, so we the people need to do it. And where do we affect them? We affect them at the workplace because that is where... Um, they can leverage their power, but that's also where we can leverage our power in order to um, in order to get what we want, in order to get not just what we want, but what we need as a as a populace. So we saw this back in August, where the American Federation of Teachers, the AFT came up with with an SOP, a standard operating procedure for what needs to happen and and all of the precautions that need to be taken in place in order to reopen schools again. The CDC didn't put that in and that should have been the CDC's job. You know, that should have been the fucking CDC's job. So you had all this you, 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 you had all of the opportunities for government bodies and government agencies to do what they were supposed to do to help the people during a pandemic and they fucking didn't and then it became the union's jobs to do it, the people's job to do it. Uh, right? So 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 that's that means that we need systemic overhaul. So if we really want to see a free and fair election, if we want to see that at all, if we want to see real electoral reform, real electoral uh, uh, election transparency on all levels, from the primaries onwards, then it looks like it's going to be the unions that are that's going to be able to do it, right? The strikes, protests, that sort of stuff. That's who's really going to be able to to push for something like that. Capitalism. Capitalism doesn't really want a democracy. It doesn't want to uphold it. Because it's bad for capitalism. It wants to purchase democracy so that it can use it as a product. So people will believe in capitalism. But what capitalism really wants is uh, authoritarianism um, to... uh, to get people to do what capitalism wants, which is uh, be in debt, have a couple people up at the top that own everything. Oh, this is the worst spot to be in. I don't even know if you can tell, but my eyes are completely covered by the sun. Uh, But it it wants people to be in debt. It wants people to constantly spend uh, more consumerism, more debt, more wars. That's what capitalism wants. And it uses democracy as a vehicle to control people, to you know, basically push them to believe in that sort of stuff. So what? What you know? That's why the people are going to call for a general strike. If you want systemic change like that, if if there's a massive general strike in this country, and think about it, if nobody shows up to work at a bunch of these fucking places, and the whole country shuts down, and then we work. Together, um, through labor organization, through mutual aid, 
and start taking care of our communities that way, what are they going to do? Well, history would suggest that they would call the military in and call, you know, basically today they would call it an act of terror. What, you know, communities taking care of each other is an act of terror and they'll send in the National Guard uh, and try to break it up. That's what they did in the past. That's what they did in the past. But if that is something that happened, I mean, and 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 the demand is that we want uh, electoral transparency and reform on all levels, which means that you know all the stolen votes and all of the exit polls that were uh, showing that you know uh, there was. Uh, election fraud done by the Democrats against Bernie Sanders uh, and somebody needs to answer for that sort of shit, then I bet you that's what will happen. And speaking of the Democrats, the Democrats are not really going to do anything against uh, Trump uh, Trump election fraud because it exposes them and the election fraud that they've committed in the primaries. So they're not really going to do anything. It's the same thing of like, why why didn't the Democrats go after Trump for the emoluments clause? Well, because they're fucking guilty of it, too. So why would they just incriminate themselves? That's why they're not going. That's why they have to come up with other bogus reasons, uh, like this whole story about, oh, democracy, we're upholding this, and we're upholding that. And voting, it's the most powerful thing. It's, you know, There's a quote I, I remember reading where they said, if voting was really as powerful as people think it is, it would have made it illegal. Voting's good, and I think you should do it to get your voice heard. Uh, but in this country, based on the way that electoral politics works, it it has a lot less power than what people think it does. Especially when voting is compromise. And that's the right thing to do, or that's pitched as the right thing to do when it's really not. How did, how did the labor movement really get the things that it wanted to get? Well, they marched in the streets. They, oh, I don't know if you can hear that at all, but boy, that truck is having a rough go through this through the tunnel. Uh, but how did they get it done? Well, strikes. They held massive strikes. City by city held general strikes. Uh, in 1934, that was like the year of general strikes. There were just general strikes happening all across the country. Um, I did do a forkful of noodles about it. I did, I did several videos about general strikes, how to make that shit happen, and, and um, why it's effective. Uh, well, in 1934, there were much of general strikes. A lot of them were very effective. A lot of them were more effective than others. Um, and then at the end of that, you had FDR, one of FDR's uh, uh, cabinet members, basically come out and say that the striking workers were treason, which made... Uh, FDR, this very liberal, progressive, socialist, democratic candidate, uh, basically made his administration look like Republican authoritarian authoritarians. Um, now, FDR's party is responsible for working class socialists to be put into prison because Woodrow Wilson was a Democrat that put the Espionage and Sedition Act into place. So his party kind of, kind of has a pattern of doing this. That's sort of a thing that they do, sort of a thing that they like. Uh, But he needed votes. He needed to get elected back into office. So the best and easiest way to do that is uh, by listening to the voices of people, stop using the military against them, um, and pass a piece of legislation called the Wagner Act that gave unions more power. Using the voice of labor. Using the voice of of the, the power of the working class, power of what's in the workplace. Um, to drive change. It wasn't, you know, that that's not legislation coming first. That's not voting coming first. That is uh, on-the-ground activism. That is on-the-ground shutting shit down, uh, pulling our resources together, supporting each other in solidarity, um, believing in mutual aid. And that's the other thing. That, that how, did these, how did the striking workers survive? Mutual aid. Farmers came to help... Um, striking workers in uh, Minneapolis and they were like here's food we're donating a bunch of food to the cause when they did it in Seattle 1919 they set up 
different parts of the city that fed over 30,000 people. Took care of uh, delivering bread and milk to people's houses and oil to hospitals. Mutual aid, solidarity. That's how it's going to be done. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.